a new version of iPlug, which is a desktop C++ plugin framework that we've updated in order to support the web. Um, and we've also added quite a lot of new features for desktop plugins as well. Um, and yeah, crucially, it allows exactly the same C++ code to be used for both a desktop plugin and a web-based plugin. So your UI can be done in C on the C++ side. You can alternatively do stuff in, in the web, of course. But. So this work is done with uh, Alex Harker and Yari here. So we've heard a lot about audio plugins already. Um, there's a few different popular formats. And if you're making a product, you almost certainly want to use something like Juice or iPlug in order to uh, spit out lots of different plugin formats from the same code base. And then you reach a wide audience and hopefully make more money from your product. Um, so for quite a long time, I've been maintaining a fork of iPlug. It wasn't originally my creation. It was uh, originally by the guys who make Reaper. Um, Cocos. Um, anyway, the original code base was really starting to show its age, and uh, some major work had to be done in order to allow it to produce plugins that are fit for 2018. Uh, and that was particularly noticeable in the area of graphics, because nowadays we have um, you know, high DPI screens, plugin UIs need to be resizable. Um, we also want high frame rates for animations and things like this. And uh, the original iPlug had a, quite a limited graphics engine, which really just worked for bitmap-based user interfaces. Um, so we've fixed these things. Uh, and at the same time, we've tried to make the code base a lot more consistent and uh, a lot better, um, addressing things like thread safety. Uh, and all of this we've done whilst trying to maintain kind of a degree of backwards compatibility because uh, myself and other people have got products that are based on uh, the original iPlug. Um, so it's a, big, a lot of work and it's not quite ready yet, um, but I hope in a few weeks I'll put it online and if you come to my workshop on Friday, uh, you might get a preview copy. So that's an incentive perhaps. So in, in 2015, um, I collaborated with Yari um, on the Web Audio Module API. Um, it's, the majority of it is his work, but I, uh, having done a lot of plugin stuff, I uh, had a small contribution. But we uh, ported my, um, the DSP part of my Casio CZ emulation to work as a WAM. Uh, but at that stage, we had to redo the user interface um, using web technologies. Um, and this was using ASM.js and the script processor node, so it's had all the issues that we've been talking about. So now I'd like to demo the new version, which is made with iPlug2, and uh, it's exactly the same code that's used for the desktop plugin. Um, so bear with me a second, there it is. I can't mirror this. OK, so this works in desktop Chrome. Um, it's live at that link. Um, the first thing you have to do is change the background color of the LCD, because that makes it way, way cooler. Um, I've got web MIDI hooked up, and I've got a, a rolly block here, which I can use to trigger it. If anyone uh, is not familiar with the Casio CZ series, it's a really nice um, early digital synthesizer, phase distortion synthesis. Um, yeah, it's really quite clever. It was uh, pretty much anti-aliased, and it was the early 80s. It came out about the time of the DX7, but uh, it was also very cheap, so it was lots of people's first synth, and it was used on lots of dance music and synth pop and that kind of thing. Anyway, that's the classic brass ensemble sound. Um, there's all sorts of things. And you can see the user interface uh, behaves, if any of you have tried the desktop version, it, it behaves uh, just the same. Um, I've had to implement a few things like uh, custom pop-up menus and that kind of thing. Thank you. <laughs> so
So I'd like to talk a bit about the, the workflow in iPlug 2, which I think is probably the, the main thing that I've added to iPlug, because this comes from my fork of iPlug originally. And um, yeah, I, I kind of see iPlug as almost like a creative coding framework, like uh, open frameworks or that kind of thing. It's very quick to create a project, and um, the project's kind of quite strictly set up so that um, you don't have to think too much about the, all the boring stuff like compiler settings and things like that, and you can focus in on your DSP and your user interface and user experience. Um, well, that's, that's the aim anyway. Um, so there's quite a well-defined folder structure. This is what the root level looks like. Inside the examples folder, um, you have subfolders for each plugin project, and you know you can rename examples to my plugins or whatever, and that, that's what I do. Um, there's a, a Python script which lets you duplicate one of these folders, and it does a find and replace on all of the um, strings that kind of identify the class for that plugin and so on. I'm sorry if there's lots of JavaScript developers who don't do any C++ or anything here, but uh, maybe seeing how simple iPlug is might inspire you to have a go with C++. Anyway, so I've just duplicated uh, a project uh, on the command line by running this Python script with a few arguments. And that spits out something like this. Uh, you've got an Xcode workspace. Um, I'll show a screenshot of that in a second. A Visual Studio solution. Um, a make file, which is uh, for Linux. That, that bit's not quite working yet, but eventually it will do Linux LB2 plugins. Um, in the scripts folder, there's a, another, um, well, there's a shell script which will compile a web audio module version. So this is what the Xcode project looks like, and uh, up there you've got a selection of different plugin formats that you can compile your plugin to. Um, so the original iPlug just did VST2 and VST, uh, sorry, an audio unit. Um, in the new version, um, we can do audio unit version 3, and it also works on iOS. So um, yeah, you can audio unit version 3 you can have on uh, iOS devices and on Mac OS. And uh, we also now support uh, VST3 plugins that are distributed. So this is a, a trend in a few mod, uh, modern plugin APIs. And it's also necessary for the, the web-based stuff um, that we have the user interface and the DSP part as kind of separate entities, and they need to communicate with a, a messaging system. So this is kind of why I like iPlug. It's a really simple, a really simple interface to create parameters, to create a control, and to link it to a parameter. Um, it's you know. Not as powerful as something like Juice, but uh, if you want to make a, a basic plugin with um, you know, the kind of UI that you often find in, in audio plugins, uh, it's more than capable. OK, so now this, this video shows how a WAM gets compiled. So I, I'm going to change into this scripts folder and uh, run this shell script. And there's two compilation stages using the mscript in compiler. Um, so one of those is going to be for the DSP part, and one of those is going to be for the user interface. And um, you've seen that the iPlug code is very concise. And basically, in order to support this distributed model, um, I've got some preprocessor macros that uh, emit certain bits of code for um, certain builds. So it means you can't do things like have a pointer to a, a widget and then get that pointer from the DSP side. You have to send a message, uh, which can be a bit confusing for beginners. So the old way still works as well. And you can kind of increase the complexity as you go. So after you've run that build script, you get a folder like this. Um, the HTML file um, has some kind of boilerplate in it for connecting with the web audio API and uh, having a web MIDI drop down and that kind of thing. Um, the, uh, all the resources for your plugin, like PNG files and fonts and things like that, they get packaged using the script in um, file packager into that resources.data file. 
So yeah, the, the JavaScript people in the audience might be horrified to know that that virtual CZ website, it's nine megabytes. And it, we were talking about a 256 byte website yesterday. I mean, and that's not even with the high resolution images. If I put them in, it's 20 megabytes, which is, anyway, it really stresses the need for vector-based UIs. Okay, so a bit more technical detail. Um, if you want to try the WAM API, that's not uh, connected to iPlug directly. Uh, iPlug is implementing that or inheriting from that. Um, so you can also, if you just use the VST SDK or even if you use Juice or something, you can get a plugin working using this. Um, there's two bits. There's the WAM controller and the WAM processor. Um, WAM controller extends audio worklet node, and that is in the, the global scope, so it can communicate with the DOM, and uh, so the, the GUI stuff has to live there. Uh, the audio worklet, the WAM processor extends audio worklet processor, and that bit is effectively sandboxed in the audio worklet global scope. So this is why we needed two uh, WASM modules, because you can't manipulate the DOM from this, this part. So if you've got some WASM, C++ compiled to WASM in here, you can't uh, manipulate the canvas object or anything like that. So these things communicate via message port, and I've defined uh, a set of messages for sending different kinds of data uh, between those two bits that are specific for this kind of purpose. Okay, so iGraphics is the, um, the graphics engine for iPlug. The new version also lets you put your own graphics engine on top. If you want to just do raw OpenGL stuff, you can do that. Or you can even use Juice on top of iPlug to be crazy. But anyway, if you want to use iGraphics, which is iPlug's graphics engine, um, yeah, that's, that's all working directly with this web audio stuff. Um, iGraphics is like the base interface for a graphics context, um, but then we've added lots of new platforms, um, and we've also added new drawing iGraphics classes. So these things kind of inherit each other in a, in a, um, a stack. So the ones that are relevant for the web, we've got this uh, iGraphics Nano VG, which uses uh, a nice library for um, anti-aliased 2D graphics uh, on top of OpenGL. I'll show you, talk more about that in a second. We've also got an iGraphics implementation that talks to the HTML5 canvas. So yeah, NanoVG, if you're not familiar with it, it's um, a really nice lightweight drawing API. Kind of maybe ironically, it's, it's modeled after HTML5 canvas. So this, this is actually what I'm using for the virtual CZ UI at the moment. Um, and yeah, you can compile this with mscripten um, using this fork that I've um, got up there. And uh, yeah, it's uh, on the desktop. It allows us to get very high frame rates and uh, do nice, uh, nice vector graphics. Um, it's uh, yeah, it seems to be performing performing very well so far. This is particularly an issue when you're on, on high DPI screens and you want to do 60 frames per second um, using a, a GPU accelerated drawing engine is quite important. Another nice thing about using this is that it's got quite a good text rasterizer. So if you're using this on the web and for desktop plugins for Windows and for Mac, you can get all the fonts to look basically the same, which is a problem with the original iPlug. The fonts look a little bit different because it's using Windows and, and Mac uh, drawing. Okay, so a kind of side effect of this um, is the ability to make remote editors for desktop plugins. And I'm doing that by um, just using that component, uh, the, the kind of GUI side, and not using the WAM stuff. Um, and in that case, I'm making a, a kind of web, WebSocket client and my desktop plugin is running a WebSocket server. So iPlug comes with some, some new, iPlug 2 comes with some new classes for setting this up. This is a, a little demo of that. So this is uh, 
this plugin here is running a, a web server and I'm in a, a browser on localhost controlling that and the communication is bi-directional. Of course, uh, that could also be on a tablet or something like that, which I think could be quite a nice thing if you're in the studio and you want to have the, the UI of your desktop plugin you know, quite far away from your machine. Another example of uh, this is using web technologies as sort of auxiliary interfaces for desktop plugins. Um, I've made this toolkit for spatial audio using high order ambisonics at uh, Huddersfield. And uh, part of that is, or part of these plugins is to visualize all the panning locations into a kind of web VR interface. So I'm using the A-frame um, library to do this. And uh, there's three plugins on these three tracks, and they're all communicating via WebSockets to um, allow this auxiliary interface, which, uh, again, it's running on local host. And um, if I'm on a local Wi-Fi network, I can take my Oculus Go headset and just navigate to the URL of my web server and you know, see the, the visualization on, on the VR headset. So that's quite nice because all the alternatives to this are like using the very expensive VR headsets and things built with Unity and stuff like that. So this allows you to use cheapo VR headsets with uh, these kind of uh, spatialization plugins. Okay, so to conclude, I'm, I'm mainly a desktop plugin developer and uh, I'm not really sure where this is all going. Um, this is it's a bit of a strange situation because it's like a chicken and egg thing. We don't really have uh, web-based DAWs yet, and it's all a bit uh, up in the air whether it's going to work and go, all go that way or not. But um, I get a big kick out of uh, seeing Virtual CZ running in the browser. Um, I also think potentially from a kind of commercial point of view, you can allow a, a potential customer to demo your plugin very quickly this way. Um, assuming they're only using Google Chrome at the moment. But uh, anyway, the, the process of downloading even a nine megabyte um, WAM is quicker than downloading a zip file for a VST plugin and installing it and stuff like that. Um, another way that people often make revenue for plugins is from, generate, from selling uh, content from preset packs and that kind of thing. And um, yeah, I think... Uh, demoing these and organizing them on a, on a web-based interface might be quite a nice approach. Also, you could make kind of interactive documentation. Um, one thing I'll say is that for desktop plugins that want to integrate web-based technologies, I think that's, you know, that really appeals to me quite a lot because um, you know, using things like WebGL, it's such, so nice compared to trying to do OpenGL um, yourself in, in C++ or whatever. So I really think that the, the kind of creative coding possibilities of things like P5.js and 3.js um, are really nice options to have as a, a desktop software developer. And once we have really nice uh, embedded web views that aren't big dependencies, um, I think that'll be, well, we'll start to see more desktop plugins that, that use web UI stuff on the desktop. Um, a bit like you get Electron apps now uh, for you know, bigger apps. Anyway, in terms of the future work for this, uh, this is all uh, kind of bleeding edge stuff and I really want to test the scalability, optimize it, uh, try and reduce the, the memory footprint. Um, I want to in investigate using the kind of uh, different file system options so that I can have libraries of presets and things like that. Um, at the moment, I'm not using the shared array buffer to communicate these messages I'm using the message port. And uh, I'm a bit concerned about the garbage collector causing glitches with that. Um, we don't have sample accurate automation for parameters, but because the Web Audio API supports it, we probably could do. Um, and yeah, this is really hard to debug. If you've got things that you compile with mscripting and then it, you know, it causes an assertion in the browser, it's um, really challenging to work out what exactly was the problem. So uh, I really want to investigate some better options for doing that. 
Okay, so that's it. And uh, please come to the workshop tomorrow. Um, if anyone uh, wants to come and they're running Windows, I'd quite like it if you could come and speak to me because I can't get mscripting working properly on Windows at all. Um, so I've got a virtual machine and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we've got, this is where it will be eventually. Uh, we've got a Slack channel for iPlug. That's virtualcz.io. The web audio module stuff, that's a community site. So if anyone's got any um, ideas about how this should work and thinks that we're doing stuff in a silly way, please go and comment and help contribute to improve this. It's only v version 0.2 at the moment. Um, so yeah, thanks very much.